This is Garrett Chambers, and I'm here with Coach Van Chancellor, uh, former coach of LSU Lady Tigers, former Houston Comets, former Ole Miss uh, Hall of Fame coach. The resume goes on and on. How you doing today, Coach? It's just great. Great seeing you today, Garrett. I'm glad to be here. So, yes, sir. Tell us, tell us how, how you've been doing lately. Well, if, if life was any better for me than it is right now, I don't know if I could stand it. Uh, I, I play golf. I don't, if I'm not playing golf, I'm visiting my grandchildren. Uh, I belong to the Methodist Church here in town, and so uh, things is just good. It's good to get up in the morning and not have to do something. Living a good life. Yeah, I, I didn't think I could find enough to do. I, I didn't. I don't like to piddle in the garage. I don't like to mow grass. I don't like to do any of that. But, you know, I found a lot of things to do every day. I play in a singers golf tournament every Tuesday and Thursday at the LSU campus course and had a lot of fun doing that. And so uh, my wife and I are traveling a good bit, so it was just a wonderful time. So tell me, Coach, what's one of your most memorable experiences coaching? No question. The, the, I, I, I've been very fortunate. The man upstairs has blessed me in every avenue in life. But, but the greatest moment as a coach it's when you're the coach of the 2004 Olympic team and you win a gold medal. And, and you got about 40 seconds to go and you got the 13 point lead and you got the ball. And you know that a country boy from Nantawaria, Mississippi, raised on a cotton farm who picked cotton when he was 13 years old, is now the coach of the Olympics gold medal winning USA team. That's the finest moment you have as a coach. Wow. So tell me one of the most challenging moments you've had coaching. No question about it. The, the most challenging moment I had in coaching is my first year at LSU, 2007, 2008. We had a, a great team. We had eight seniors returning. We had everybody returning who'd been to the Final Four. We had all the experience in the world. We have senior night, and I go out and, and I hug eight seniors that I really thought were just great players, great human beings, all graduated, by the way, all are productive members of life. And then I turn and look at the beans don't have four players returning. And now, in my second year here, we have the greatest challenge that I ever have faced as a coach. I don't know if people really understand what kind of challenge we had. We had to go out and we recruited seven freshmen in one year. But we had to have the players. We, and so that was the greatest challenge I thought I'd faced as a coach at any time. You think they met the challenge? Do what I, I thought personally I met the challenge because at the, at that freshman team made the playoffs, went to the second round of the playoffs, and and, and I, I thought we we rebuilt a program that was down, that nobody thinks it was down because it had been the five final fours, right. but in reality it was down because it only had those four players. I thought we did a great job rebuilding it. Tell me about coaching the Houston Comets. 1997, I was the coach of the Old Miss Rebels, Lady Rebels. I was just having the greatest time in beautiful Oxford, Mississippi, town of 12,000, no traffic jams, no, nothing, great friends, and just rolling. But I was the kind of guy who wanted to accept the challenge. I just wanted something different. I wanted to go to Houston and maybe do the fellowship of Christian athletes, make a difference in more people's lives. There's four million people out there. So I get the team, I don't know Cynthia Cooper, I, I knew I'd heard of her, but I, I, I go to my first practice and I'm coaching Cynthia Cooper, Cheryl Swoops, and Tina Thompson. I said, oh my goodness, I said, Lord, you really blessed me, thank you. And, and we sold 16,285 tickets to our first game against the New York Liberty in 1997. For the next four years, we averaged 12,000 people, paying customers, no free tickets. Oh, was that a great experience. Tell me from, we're in March Madness and uh, things are going uh, as they do in March, uh, good games going on. Tell me what do you think uh, the women's side of basketball needs to it continue advancing the way that it has over the past 20 years? My personal opinion, I don't have, I, it's, it's hard to offer a, an answer to something without a solution to your answer. I don't have a solution, I just have an answer. I think there's somehow, some way, we've got, the women have got to find some way to get away from the men's time of year. Maybe extend the season another month, cut it short another month. The men are just so popular. So many close games and 
I, I'll tell you something else. This is a personal issue. This Nobody else would agree with this. I wish in women's basketball, we would officiate a closer game. Quit letting it become so physical. I do not think women can score with all that holding, pounding, body checking, and all of that. I wish, I wish we would start early in the year, call the games closely, and then we would have more of a finesse game and I think would really, really suit the women's game. That's a good answer, Coach. Um, so my last question is a signature question we ask everybody we yeah. interview. Um, if you can make one statement to everybody in the entire world, what would it be and why? There's no question the one statement I would make. Get up every day. Enjoy the day. Live life with a passion. Because when you're 39, you think you're going to live forever. When you're 69 like I am, you know that you don't only have so many more days on this earth. Get up. Enjoy it. Take a great outlook. Life is how you look at it. I'll tell you this quick story. I belong to a little small church in Oxford, Mississippi. Two women that day were having a tough time. I mean a tough time. And I walked in the church, and when I did, they just began to smile. And one of the ladies told my wife, she said, Betty, we were so down in the dumps. I lost my job. The other lady said, I lost my husband. But said, when Van walked by, we both thought, it's been a tough day, but thank God we aren't married to him. <laughs> Well, thank you, Coach. Uh, that was the first time I laughed at the end of an interview. I appreciate that. Well, this is Gary that's Chambers. With, go ahead, Coach. That's a true story. That's a true story. That's a true, <laughs> true story. You got to understand, my wife and I have been married 50 years. She's been happy 30 of them. But I, I, everybody else thinks my wife is the perfect person and has done everything in our marriage, and I'm just lucky to have her. That's a good deal. Well, Miss Ben is a lucky lady, and you're a lucky man. Huh? Thank you. Well, this is Garrett Chambers signing off with the Rouge Collection and Coach Van Chancellor. It's irreplaceable. It's groundbreaking. It's outstanding. It's wonderful. It's so yeah. That's what it is. Rouge Collection.